Hello, my name is Kathy Dixon. Welcome to The Math Reflective, where I talk about how I teach, reflect on teaching, and how I might impact my students in my own professional learning. Today I want to talk to you about a math language routine called the three reads. Math language routines were developed out of Stanford, and if you want more information on all the math language routines, I'm going to go ahead and link that document below. If you're new to watching my videos, I'm a sixth grade math teacher in Illinois. I teach both the sixth grade standard level and sixth grade advanced, which would be the seventh grade level curriculum. Our school is continuing Open Up Resources 6-8 Math, which is authored by Illustrative Mathematics. This is an inquiry-based program and is very rich in text. There's a couple purposes in doing a three reads math language routine. One of them is to help students negotiate meaning in a text rich problem and also just to help equip them with the tools that they're going to need and to reflect on the different ways mathematical questions are asked in a problem. This particular activity was from grade seven, unit five, lesson seven, and it was about solar panels and an energy bill. Th this particular time that I employed the three reads math language routine, we were reading with three purposes in mind. And when I switch over to how I did it in the classroom, you'll see that it is just a screen recording. No students are shown in this video, but I am gonna walk through this math language routine and how I approached it with this particular activity in the class. All right, we're on lesson seven in unit five, and we're focusing on the difference between distance and difference today. And we're on this activity called solar power, but let's just start by noticing, what do you notice about that picture? Just look at the picture on the screen. What do you notice? What is that? Yes? Okay, it's what? Say that again. A house with solar panels. Yeah, what are solar panels? And what do they do? Yes. Um, solar panels are um, things that um, collect energy from um, the sun, so you can use them as like lights and stuff, in lights. Excellent explanation. Okay, yes. So this is about Han's family, and we're going to employ a math language routine today. So InfoGap that we did recently, that's a math language routine. It helps us to think about and break down the language of the problem helps us to attend to precision, helps us decide what kind of process we would use to solve the problem. So we're gonna do something called a three reads. We're actually gonna read through this problem with three different purposes. So your iPads are closed right now. You can just focus up on the screen. So we're not just right away trying to like, oh, I'm gonna plug in this number and, and do this and calculate. We're just focusing on the language that's in the context of this problem. iPads should be closed. Do you have a question? You counted, so there's 34 solar panels. Way to be accurate and precise, great job. Okay, so our first purpose of reading, our first read through is we're just gonna get the, actually I'll ask you a question after. I'm gonna see what you get from it just from me reading. Han's family got a solar panel. Each month they get a credit to their account for the electricity that is generated by the panel. The credit they receive varies based on how sunny it is. In January they used $83.56 cents worth of electricity and generated $6.75 cents worth of electricity and here is their electricity bill from January and then it goes on to show like their current charges can you scroll down a little bit and then it'll show the solar credit and the amount due okay go back up to the picture for our first read what is just the general gist of what is this about not giving me specific numbers right now but what is this problem concerning. Yes? The family solar panels. The family solar panels. What else about it? Yes. I'm not going to say student mm -hmm. names, so. The cost? About the cost of what? Of the, um, the electricity bill. The cost of the electricity bill. So it's about the electricity bill. And how do the solar panels affect the electricity bill? What did it say? Yes? It, uh, it generated So, worth of electricity, which would most likely be taken away from the initial bill. Okay, so I'm going to restate what you said so it picks up here for the video. So they use solar panels to generate some of the electricity, and you're saying it's probably going to take some of the amount off of their bill. Excellent. Okay, second read. Our second read, now we're going to focus on the values and what they represent in the problem. Okay? 
Han's family got a solar panel. Each month they get a credit to their account for the electricity that is generated by the panel. The credit they receive varies based on how sunny it is. In January, they used $83.56 worth of electricity and generated $6.75 worth of electricity. Here is their electricity bill from January. Can you scroll again? Their current charges are $83.56, their solar credit $6.75, and the amount due $76.81. Okay, now our purpose is to think about the numbers. What, what are some of the values in this problem and what do they represent? Go ahead, raise your hand. Yes? Uh, they're in debt. $76.81. Okay. I like that vocabulary word that you use. They're in debt, $76.81. What does that mean? Uh, that they don't have, that's how much they owe. That's how much they owe. Excellent. What's another value in this problem that we're going to be using? What's another value in this problem we're going to be using? Yes. $83.56, and what does that represent? Um, the charge that they have currently. Yeah, it's how much electricity they used currently. What else? Very important one. Yes. Uh, $6.75. $6.75, and what does that represent? Uh, how much is taken off? Yeah, what is it called specifically? Um, Can you see that? The credit? Yeah, it's called a solar credit. And we know that the word credit means money that's going to be given back, right? And that debt is money that we owe. Okay, third read. I'm going to read the problem quickly again. And this time I want you to think about how do I use these values to put together an equation to figure this out if I have questions about it. Okay, let me read one more time. Hans' family got a solar panel. Each month they get a credit to their account for the electricity that is generated by the panel. The credit they receive varies based on how sunny it is. In January, they used $83.56 worth of electricity and generated $6.75 worth of electricity. Here is their bill from January. OK, so thinking about it that third time, what are you going to need to do without doing it because your iPads are closed? What would we need to do to figure out what they actually owe? Yes. Okay, so current charges minus the solar credit is going to be the amount due. Yes? You could also do the current charges plus negative um, of the solar credit to get the amount due. So you're saying we could do current charges plus negative counting for the credit to get the amount due. All right, so now you're going to have some questions with this problem. So this number one says, in July, they were traveling away from home and only used 1924 worth of electricity. So everyone helped create the equation for that first one before number one. And if I were to write it, I would follow your advice. So take that 8356 in the current charge. Subtract the credit, but I'm going to write it as addition of the opposite. And that's going to equal 7681. Okay, so the next problem you're going to have is something about July when they were only used 1924 worth of electricity. Their solar panel generated 2275 worth of electricity. So now we've read it three, three times. We know the process that we're going to take. You're going to solve this as a table group. Go ahead and work on that now. <laughs> 